what is going on everybody so what we're doing today is I'm gonna be showing you guys how I apply DTF to uh, leatherette now when it comes to leatherette you can you know apply all kinds of different products on their vinyl foils uh, DTF in this case but we've got about 72 patches that we need to create uh, leatherette DTF combo to be able to get us this type of look here now you've seen this before but this individual really liked the samples that we sent uh, before they were going with flock but instead I said hey we can laser cut all the patches and apply DTF to them in the different colors that you need so we cut out the shapes here at the shop and this is something that you guys can also do on my website is you can order custom shapes uh, if you wanted to and then you can also order the DTF to be able to apply to the leather and patches I think it just adds another dimension that isn't really out there and it's a very easy technique so what I'm gonna do today is kind of show you guys what I do to make this process very simple now you see what I got going on here we've got the Cricut the little iron little baby iron that you can get you can pick these up also on Amazon I'm gonna put a link in the description to one of these that I found on Amazon that works pretty good now you do want the different settings on these because you want to be on the lowest setting the lowest setting will probably give us about I want to say maybe 230 to 250 degrees it's kind of where we want to be because what we're trying to do here is we're only trying to tack these down now the great thing about the DTF that I have on the website the supreme color hot peel is that this works with polyester fabrics down to as low as 250 Fahrenheit so that's fantastic but because this is a very quick release hot peel it makes it very easy to tack it and then let it I usually just let them sit and once they've sat you can easily just peel them and that's it so the reason why we just want to tack it is because we do know that this is going to go on a hat so we're going to be also applying more heat to the patch so we only want to tack it so that it still has time to adhere once we do the initial press now what I've got here I got off of my platen from my TransPro plus so when you order a transpro heat press this 15 by 15 platen here came with this removable silicone pad now this pad was not glued to it and I kind of complained about it at first but now I kind of like the fact that you know it comes right off because now I can use it as a workspace when I'm doing these I mean I could take this and set it right on there if I wanted to it and I don't have to worry about anything burning but I also got the 4x4 platen you can order these too only because I lost the little thing that this sits in this usually has a thing that it sits in but I could set it right on top of that and this becomes my work area but you can also order these pads as well on Amazon I'm also gonna put a link in the description to these silicone pads they're about almost a uh, half inch thick very dense silicone rubber but I'll have a link to the description so you can get one of these so that when you're creating these patches you'll have a nice work area to work with uh, I, I kinda like these because they're a little more solid they're more dense compared to the Cricut pad that's more like a pillow and I don't want a pillow because so what we're doing is we're taking this patch here and we're gonna grab a transfer here now it's pretty easy to line it up you see what we're doing here we're taking our leatherette patch and we're just kind of lining it up to where we have that so we're even all the way around and once we have it even we can go ahead and tack it down now in my opinion I've seen a lot of people use their heat press and show it that way me personally I don't like that method too much can go wrong by having this I can control the situation 
when it comes to tacking these. Okay, so now that I got that, I'm gonna hold it with these fingers, and then I'm gonna just lightly, I mean, we're talking lightly, and that's down. And then you just lightly rub it in a circle, and that's all you gotta do. That is done. Now what I would do is probably have like something that, where you can lift this up easily, and just set it aside. Go on to your next one. Grab a transfer. In my opinion, it's a lot safer doing it this way than using a heat press. But a lot of people have asked, how the heck do you do that? This is how. At least this is how I do it. And you can knock out plenty of transfers in a good amount of time, adding the DTF. Now, what are some of the benefits of doing the DTF over, say, UV uh, DTF where you're printing directly on the leatherette? Well, one, it's another printer you gotta buy, which we're actually going to buy one. Um, so, it's another printer that you have to have in your shop. Let's do a black one. I'm gonna do a black one real quick. So we'll let this one sit for just a few. So this is one that's been sitting already. Now even though these are hot peels, you wanna just let these cool because you're, you're tacking them lightly. You wanna let them cool so that you can peel them and have no issues. Now that looks beautiful. So when you go to take the adhesive off and apply that to your hat, that is the patch that you're gonna have. And then you just get that nice full color image and then you get the thickness of the patch. A lot thicker than flock. And with the leatherette options, especially on my site, there's 12 different colors to choose from. So that's the cool thing. You know, you can mix and match all kinds of different uh, styles and be able to get it on. But this is the cool thing. You can create an assortment of patches doing the DTF on, on different color combos. So this one's had a chance to cool down a bit. So let's go ahead and see how that one didn't tack as much. So you still got some adhesive there. See that right there? That's your black backing on this patch. Now if you wanted to say it didn't tack enough, okay, and you wanted to just make sure it's tacked down, once you peel this, that's why I have this little 5x5 five five sheet of Teflon here. You can go ahead and hit that one more time. Just lightly hit that one more time. And that's it. When it comes to the black leatherette patches, very hard to see when you're putting your transfer, uh, especially when you got a DTF transfer that kind of blends. Like this one does have some black uh, outlines on it. So it can be a little more difficult to see on the gray pad. So one way that I fix that issue is I've got some leather here. And this is your basic veg tan leather. You could probably go get some at your local uh, fabric store, Joann's or someplace. Uh, but putting the black patch against the cream color leather, and we're using the opposite side. So this is the smooth side of the leather. And then this is the back side, so it's a little, it's got a little texture, it's a little rougher. Uh, but what that does, it keeps the patch from sliding around. Um, if you think you can use the Teflon sheet, it's a little harder because this patch really slides a lot on the Teflon. And you kind of want this in place when you're trying to put this down. So the way I do this is place the leatherette patch. I line up everything here on one side the way I think it looks even and then from there I hold it put my finger down and I am good everything looks nice and even and then from there take your little iron lightly press one side to tack it and then slowly smooth out the rest and then go in circles of, you know maybe ten times grab it and then over here 
I've got a metal plate. I put that right on the metal plate to help it cure and cool that much faster. So that is how you can do the darker patches if you can't see on the red. They do have different color pads. I know they've got the reddish color pads that you can get, but gray is your typical color. So this is what you can do to be able to see the darker leatherette or darker patches that you might be doing. Now, the reason why we want to tack very lightly is because if you put too much pressure on these, they do have the tendency to stretch. The transfer itself will stretch because it has a very stretchable ink that it uses. You know, you want to take caution. So you don't want to push and push with a lot of weight. You want to be very light and just, you know, go at a nice little pace. Once you get the hang of it, then it's super easy. You know, you'll, you'll get it. And by using the lightest setting, we're making sure that we don't kill the adhesive. Now, here's the other reason why I like doing this with the little iron. Because when you put it under a heat press, the bottom platen gets hot, right? It can. And then all of the, the pieces here, if you're not using, you know, a Teflon sheet above it, they can stick to the plate, but they can get very hot very quick. Here, we're kind of controlling the environment because this pad is nice and cool. So what happens with that is it doesn't interfere with the back, the adhesive that's on the back. And because you're using a very light uh, heat setting on this little iron, you don't have to worry about creating any issues in regards to melting the adhesive that's on the back. All you're doing is you're tacking the actual transfer itself in place. Kind of like tack welding. You know, you tack it in place and then you come back after and you completely hit the whole job fully with your welding system and create a nice bead, so to speak. So this is my technique that I use for creating patches when I'm doing custom patches. It saves me time, I control my environment, and I can get through a lot of patches very fast. I see a lot of people on their, let's just say this represented, this mat represented a heat press. I see a lot of people trying to do this where they take the transfer, they go like this, they put it on there, and then they try to tape it to the platen itself no that that just it wastes a lot of time and then in that regard you're wasting material and then two you can never guarantee you know that things are going to shift or whatnot in this regard again you're just you're able to get a better visual from the top of what you're doing you know you could see it with your eyes exactly what you're doing here and you can look at it and then once you got it one finger down very lightly hit the sides and then slowly cover the top. Now I'm, I'm feathering this, I'm barely holding it. But hopefully this helps you guys. Uh, I have seen you guys ordering DTF transfers on the website. A lot of money to be made in creating hats, guys. Transfers like these are probably running you anywhere from 30 to 50 cents a piece. In some cases, maybe less. So putting a bunch of these in a gang sheet or or with our site we don't we don't you don't need a gang sheet you just would upload this one image and you would say hey I need about a hundred of these or 80 of these and we do all the gang sheeting for you so we help you out in that regards to make sure that your items come out perfect uh, we do have one of the best hot peels on the market uh, 280 degrees 10 seconds so Give them a shot if you're interested in, in ordering DTF transfers. The, the benefit of my website is that you can order custom blank shapes and your DTF all in one shot. You guys just have to know what these measurements are uh, by being able to test them. Now, one way that I test my transfers and my shapes, in order to get this shape right here, what I do is use cardstock. And I will shape this in light burn and then I will cut it 
And then what I do is once that's cut, I'll take my image, I will line it up to see exactly what it looks like. If I like that outer dimension on that shape, if I see it's nice and even all the way around, then I know I am good to go on doing a full run of the shapes. So this is how I test my shape patterns using cardstock paper and a laser. That way I'm not using expensive material and, and wasting it. So by doing this, you save time, you save money, you save material, and then you, you lock in your size. And once your size is locked in, you know it's a go for your actual material. So that's a little tip for those of you guys that have lasers. That is what you do. But hey, many of you guys have asked, how is it done? This is how I do it. So a tip from Essential, check out the website, EssentialPrintSupply.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. Uh, we got a pretty cool video that we just created where we're doing a wood grain looking patch. So this is a leatherette patch, but it's made to look like wood. So that is going to be the next trend coming up. So be ready for that video when it releases here in the next couple days. So if it's not already released, might come before this one. Who knows? But thanks for watching. Catch you later.